Welcome back to the video on bringing your Chromebook back to life with Gallium OS. What we're going to be doing now is after we have run the Mr. Chromebook script and it shut down, which was explained in the previous video, we're now going to turn the computer back on. When it comes back on, it's going to um, boot the BIOS, and the very first time it does that, it's going to take maybe 20 seconds or so before anything actually happens on the screen, so don't get too impatient. Um, after that 20 seconds, you're going to see a little bunny come up. Now, I've run this once, so we're not going to have to wait the 20 seconds. But when I turn the power on, as soon as I turn the power on, I get this little bunny that comes up. That's normal. And it says escape uh, for options. Now, I'm going to turn it off again, and I'm going to show you that when I hit escape, it brings up to kind of a sub-menu. Uh, that it allows me to do a variety of things, but what I really want to do is to be able to boot to a flash drive called RescueZilla. Now, RescueZilla is the cloning software that we're going to use to clone the image of uh, Gallium OS. Now, I could install Gallium OS just from the, the flash drive itself, and that's fine, but I do a lot of computers. We do uh, 150 to 200 a month, and as a result, I don't have the time or the patience to go through all the steps to flash or to install um, Gallium OS from scratch because it asks you a few things and then it whirs and clicks and asks you a few more things and whirs and clicks and it takes a long time. By using RescueZilla, it's a cloning software. I made an image using RescueZilla again and I'll make another video on that on how to make an image. Uh, but the idea is that now I've created a flash drive that has an image on it that has exactly what I need. So we're going to use this along with the Rescue Zilla uh, flash drive. So first thing I need to do is boot from this flash drive. And the way that I do that, I'm going to plug it into the flash drive, the USB port. I'm going to turn on the power. Now I'm going to get my finger over here next to the escape key because as soon as it comes up, I need to hit the escape key so I hit the escape key when that little bunny showed up. And now I have three choices. I have the default boot, the boot menu, uh, the boot manager. The one we want to go to, though, is the boot menu because I want to choose to boot off the USB flash drive. In this case, mine is called USB Disk 2.0. I don't know. It's just something generic. So I choose that one, and I press Enter. As soon as I press enter, it's going to ask me which language do I want to use RescueZilla on. I press enter for English, and I can start it or I can load it into RAM. Now, sometimes it's useful to load it into RAM if you only have one USB port, and sometimes only one working USB port. You can load it into RAM, then pull the, the RescueZilla USB out. But we're going to just uh, use Start RescueZilla. And now it's going to do a bunch of uh, command line things that don't mean a whole lot to most people. It's going to take it uh, a minute or two to get to the desktop, if you will, of RescueZilla, which is a graphical interface. Now, if any of you out there have ever used CloneZilla, I like CloneZilla, but boy, it's hard to use at times. This one is a graphical representation of CloneZilla. And it does a f fantastic job because it's much easier for me to understand which drive I'm sending it to and which drive um, I want to make sure that's installed on. So it's still booting from the flash drive right now. And all these are Linux commands. It's going to be done here in a second. And then it's going to be at the desktop, if you want to think of it that way, for RescueZilla. Okay, it's almost there. Now, when it comes up, it automatically brings up assume assumption here that you want to either restore an image or clone your hard drive or back up an image. The backup is what I use for creating this original image. And again, I'll make a video for that on how to use RescueZilla uh, to make a backup image that sits here on your flash drive. This is really useful if you're going to make a lot of images, if you're going to go through a lot of computers. Uh, we are a refurbisher, 
and we use strictly Linux and Chrome OS where we can. Um, and as a result, we go through a lot of computers. Anyway, I'm going to hit the escape or hit the little X up here at the top. And this is actually the Clonezilla desktop. Now it flashed this real quick, but the Clonezilla has some other things to it. You can do uh, partition editing on here. You have a little browser if you want to put it on there. You can have a file manager. It doesn't do a whole lot, but it does just the things that you need in terms of being able to, you know, set up your drives and copy a drive from one location to another. I'm going to go back into RescueZilla by clicking on the little icon down here. The only thing about RescueZilla is you can't double tap on the uh, um, trackpad. You actually have to, you know, like a, a mouse, you have to click the lower corner of the trash trackpad in order to get it to work. Now, before we go any further, I need to put in the drive now that contains the uh, Gallium OS. And this is a drive that I made that, you know, nothing exotic or anything like that. And I made this one so that I also know that it's Braswell. Now, on this particular computer, there is another USB drive. So I'm just going to put it, put the blue drive that contains the image there on the, that USB drive. And then I'm going to go and tell it to restore the image. So it's going to take the image that's on that little blue flash drive that I created much much earlier and it's going to take that image and put it on the SSD drive of the um, Chromebook. All right, so I'm going to start it by clicking on restore. It goes out and it searches for any images out there just to see um, and it identifies the images by certain formats, file formats, that sort of thing. So once it's finished going out and locating to see if there's any images out there, it brings up this choice. Well, in our case, I know that the name of my USB drive ends with HPV150W. That's just the name of the flash drive. I never really changed it. So that's where the image is located. I'm going to click on that one and make sure it's highlighted. Then I'm going to go to the next button in the right corner. Click on that. It's now showing me the image, and this is one that I made on 917. Um, now I periodically update the image. Uh, I might upload this to the uh, Google Drive so that people can download the image and use it. It's a lot easier than doing it the hard way. Um, it has some a lot of things that are set up so everything works smoothly and it has good sound and that sort of stuff. So um, that's the image we're going to use. Now, as I said, I update this image periodically because just like all software, Linux needs to be updated. Well, I update it on the computer that has the image already installed and then I do a backup of that image again to the flash drive. Anyway, we'll be explaining more about that right now. I'm just choosing the image that I'm going to use. I'm gonna click next. And now I have to tell it where I'm going to put the image, which drive it's going to go on. Now, at first, this may seem a little daunting, but you just need to look for the one that says MMC. Now, uh, other drives or other brands of Chromebooks may have a little bit different name, but this is the SSD that is on the Chromebook itself, like the hard drive, so to speak. So I'm going to choose the one that says MMC. I'm going to hit Next. And now it's going to ask me, do I want to include both partitions? Yeah, I do. Just hit next on that one. And now it's saying, uh, what do I want to do? Do I want to restore it with inconsistencies and all the other stuff? The answer is yes. So I hit next. And it asks me, are you sure you want to do this? And I hit yes. And it's going to take it. Uh, usually three to four minutes, it doesn't take very long uh, to copy this image from the flash drive over to the um, SSD on the Chromebook. I am going to pause this because there's no point just again watching paint dry here. Alright, so it's finally finished 
it did take about uh, four minutes, five minutes, and it says 4.1 minutes, uh, it gives you even the time there. So at this point, I'm going to exit out of um, RescueZilla and shut down the computer. The easiest way to do that on a Chromebook is not use the little menu and all that kind of stuff, is you just hit the power button. You hit it once, and for um, RescueZilla anyway, that says, okay, shut down. It doesn't give you any, any second chance, like, are you sure, or anything like that. All right, so it's completely shut down now. So we're about to look at the finished product here. I'm going to pull the USB drives out. I had two of them in there, one for RescueZilla and one for the uh, Gallium OS. And I'm going to turn the power on now, and let's see what we get. There's my money, which is what I expected from Mr. Chromebox. And then it's going to whir and click a little bit, and hopefully Gallium OS will come up. All right, so it's starting Gallium OS. And remember, this was the same Chromebox or Chromebook that we started with, where it was running Chrome OS out of the box. Now, this is a customized image of Gallium OS that is specific to Braswell. Um, all of the features do work, so if I put it on Wi-Fi again, and put in the right password, and it's now on Wi-Fi. So, for the most part, the only thing this really has on it is Google Chrome. But really, it's a Chromebook anyway, so you use Google Chrome. Now this is an automated, it's just the place where it goes to, second chance computer refurbishing is what we do, and this is kind of an honorary agreement uh, that comes up in the browsers. They can always change it once they get going. Uh, but the, the point is that the uh, browser works just fine. If I go to YouTube, just to check the sound, make sure the sound has good quality and that sort of thing. That's one of the biggest issues sometimes on, on uh, using or converting something from um, Chrome OS, especially an older Chromebook. And I'm going to just go to the one that says Patrick Mahone's. I'm just testing the sound right now. Mix good good sauce with my new spicy good good sauce for spicy good 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 sauce. Tell me you're getting somewhere. We've already lost so much of the island to that. And it's all set. That's not surprising given the sample's behavior. Okay. Now again, this is a customized desktop. If you install Gallium OS, make sure you download the correct one. Uh, the one for the processor. I know this processor is a Braswell. Uh, I'll be putting a link um, in the description below that, that allows you to determine what is the family of the computer that you have or the Chromebook that you have so you download the right image. All right, um, at this point, it's a fully functioning system. I can distribute it out to the kids. Uh, the thing about this, though, is uh, it is automatically coming to the desktop. And one of the things that I do uh, distribute as part of the documentation is the fact that it has a preset password. So if they are going to run, for example, um, updates. So I want to make sure this thing is updated. It's going to ask for a password. Well, the password is user with a capital U. I do document it. Kids and families still kind of forget that sometimes, or they forget to put the capital U in there and that sort of stuff. The other thing about this that I want to point out while I've got you here is it does not show the password. I'm going to type a capital U, S, E, R. It does not show the password, but when I press enter, it accepts the password. So it's masking the password, again, for security and it's going to go through and it's going to uh, see if there's any updates that it needs to do and it looks like it's okay at this point. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down now and again, the fastest way to shut down one is I can just close the lid if I want to, um, you know, if I want to keep it, you know, active and that's what a lot of people do with Chromebooks. But if I also want to just sh shut it down cold, all I have to do is hit the power button once and it gives me some choices here. Now, instead of hitting the power button, 
on the Gallium OS, I can come down here in the bottom left and it's kind of like a little start menu. And then I have an icon that if I click on it, it gives me the same thing. It's much easier, just hit the power button and I'm gonna choose shut down. And shutting down on Gallium OS just takes a few seconds, probably 15 seconds or so, uh, to complete the process. And now it's turned off. All right, that uh, pretty much goes through the whole process uh, that I use to distribute 200 computers, 200 Chromebooks a month, uh, where we uh, image them with a Linux image that basically is a very bare minimum and it just has Chrome on it, and then they can go out to, you know, Google Docs or anything else that they want to use. Kids in a lot of families are used to the Chrome OS, so it's not a big deal for them uh, to go out and, you know, log into Gmail and away they go. All right, well, hopefully this has been helpful to you. I'll be able to be providing some other documentations, including how to use uh, RescueZilla in future videos.